about women's reproductive rights and religious liberty. I'm joined now by three people who know a lot about this, uh, Attorney Gloria Allred, Attorney Christian Wagoner of the Alliance Defending Freedom, and Professor Steve Vermeil, a law professor at American University. And let me start with you, if I could, Gloria Allred. What did you make of this morning's arguments? Well, first of all, of course, we, we know that we can never tell how a justice is going to rule based on the questions that they ask, because sometimes they're asking questions which are at, intended to have the answers influence the vote of another justice. But having said that, of course, I do agree with Justice Ginsburg's questions and Justice Sotomayor's uh, question, which essentially incorporates Justice Ginsburg's question, that didn't, uh, the co didn't Congress, through the Affordable Care Act, intend to have women be able to be afforded contraceptive coverage, seamless health coverage, and not require them to have to go out and search for coverage outside of the health plan that would be provided by their employer. And, and I think their answer would be, yes, that's what the intention of Congress was, to make sure that women's contraceptive coverage would be covered. And Kristen Wagner, let me ask you, what did you see out of this as the justices sought to try to balance of religious liberty and women's reproductive rights. Kristen? Well, I, I think what the justices are trying to do is uh, assume that Congress meant what it said. And what it didn't say in the statute is that uh, contraceptives must be covered by everyone. And I think the unique aspect of this particular argument is that those who argued uh, in favor of essentially requiring nuns to dole out birth control, um, they were happy with the Obama administration's exemptions early on. When they provided exemptions for churches and others, they said, oh, yes, the administration has the authority to determine who gets exemptions. But now that the administration has changed, they don't like how the agency is interpreting those exemptions. So I want to bring this back. This isn't about access to birth control. It's about whether you a statute gives the authority to an agency to decide these types of issues. And we know they haven't produced even one woman who hasn't been able to get coverage. That's right. That was very, I thought, very striking that they uh, argued that. Uh, Professor Steve Vermeil, you covered the Supreme Court for years for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, tell me what you saw between the lines here. Well, it was obviously a very lively, um, sometimes technical argument. I think it's hard to tell uh, from listening to it whether the court is going to decide this on a, a administrative basis. Did the, did the Trump administration in expanding the rule follow the proper procedures? or whether the court will be more influenced by the, the competing images that we heard of, of the effect of the rule, that on the one hand, the liberal justices depicting uh, thousands of women who may not be able to get access to contraception, and on the other hand, more conservative justices depicting it as a question of the religious freedom of employers not to be forced to provide contraception. I think it's hard to see which way the court will go. And Gloria Allred, let me ask you about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was phoning in from her hospital bed where she's I receiving know. treatment for a gallbladder issue, but seemed to be very lively and very much in the middle of this debate. Yes, she did. And uh, I have had the honor and the pleasure of meeting Justice Ginsburg and having dinner with her at an event and actually just seeing her and speaking very briefly to her uh, in February of this year uh, at an event where an award was being made, a Woman of Leadership Award, in her honor. Uh, she is persistent. She is a fighter. She is going to phone in from a hospital bed or wherever she is because she takes her duty as uh, a justice of the Supreme Court very, very seriously. And, uh, you know, she is my shero and the shero, the hero of so many millions of women, not only in the United States, but also in the world. So uh, I'm proud of her. I, I will say that if there is any discretion of any agency, 
let's assume there is only for the purpose of discussion. I think the justice has made clear that it can't be capricious. It can't be arbitrary. It has to be reasonable. So uh, I, the argument here is that what the Trump administration has expanded in terms of exemptions is not reasonable uh, and is arbitrary and is capricious. So I do think the, you know, even if no woman has said, I can't get birth control, that's not the way I think to decide this because it's clear that if their health plans do not uh, allow them to get coverage for contraceptives, uh, that many women will be deprived of their ability to get contraceptive coverage because many will not be able to afford to get it elsewhere won't be able to find it elsewhere and are going to have to do the kind of search for contraceptives that they should not be required to do and that was not the intention of the affordable care act that they had to do and kristen wegger i know you don't agree with that were there any surprises for you in this morning's arguments well, I think the biggest surprise was just the extreme nature of the counsel uh, for Pennsylvania and New Jersey, in the sense that he at one point even argued that only essentially ministers should be entitled to an exemption, uh, meaning that potentially even the little sisters. I mean, we're talking about nuns. And when we want to talk about reasonableness, is it reasonable that we would force Catholic nuns to dole out birth control? Another petition that's pending before the court has to do with March for Life, which is a pro-life organization that brings millions to Washington, D.C. each year. They would be required, a pro-life organization whose entire purpose is to promote pro-life causes, to potentially use their money, spend their money for their employees to have abortifacient coverage under their policies when they can go and get that from other places. So this theoretical stuff of the slippery slope and women can't find birth control, we're smart. Birth control is easily accessible. We can get it in our doorstop overnight. And the government itself has admitted in this case that there are many other means that they can use to ensure women have seamless coverage, get their birth control and their abortifacients without forcing religious objectors to be complicit in it. And uh, Kristen Wagner, do you think the court's going to take this on head on or just find a way to do a technical um, ruling that will not take the bigger issue in consideration? Oh, you know, in our experience before the court, you never know exactly what it will do. And this is the sixth case in the last eight years over this particular statute. Um, so I think it's difficult to say. I was interested in Justice Thomas's questions related to standing, meaning whether the states actually should be able to present this claim. And also, um, this is a little different than previous cases involving what discretion does an agency have in determining exemptions. So I think it could could be a little bit of a boring decision in the sense of it might focus on uh, administrative discretion and those kinds of things, but it's certainly important as you see how it plays out and affects real people. And Steve Vermeil, you've sat through so many uh, court hearings over the years as a lawyer and as a journalist. Uh, was this any different uh, to see it this way with the uh, questions? We certainly, uh, Justice Thomas rarely asks a question. He asked plenty of questions today. I mean, it's fascinating to, to get to hear it live and not be in the courtroom. Um, that's an unusual experience. Justice Thomas, I think, probably felt that if the Chief Justice was actually going to call on him by name, uh, it was, it was uh, not a, a, a situation in which you simply wanted to say, I pass. And so he felt uh, that he should participate. I wanted to just note one thing, which I think we heard most clearly from Justice Breyer, and that is the court's frustration that this issue hasn't been settled. The court had this case in 2016. It seemed to be deadlocked at the time. Um, it, it issued a ruling in which it basically said, let's send this back to the lower courts so that the government and the various parties and the states and the courts can all figure out a solution. And Justice Breyer seemed somewhat frustrated that, that here we are again and still not clear what the solution is. That's right. And Gloria, oh, we heard that from him. He said, why can't we work this out? Is there a way to balance these uh, issues, the religious liberty and women's reproductive rights? 
Well, I mean, I think that Justice Ginsburg was essentially suggesting that, you know, women also have to have their views respected. There should be tolerance for their views. You know, not everybody agrees with the anti-choice and anti-contraceptive views of uh, the so-called pro-life uh, religious groups. There are many people whose religions do not require uh, that uh, that uh, they give up contraceptives or do not have access to contraceptives. So what about respect and tolerance for the religious views of those who do not agree, for example, with the views of uh, the Little Sisters of the Poor who are Catholic? Uh, and I, we try to respect everyone's religious views in the United States and not just the views of one religion. All right. Well, this would be a closely watched decision. We've got about 20 seconds left. Uh, Ms. Allred, care to predict the outcome? Uh, no, I can't predict the outcome, but I hope it's an <laughs> yeah, outcome yeah. And that no protects one wants the rights to. of women. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, my thanks to you, Gloria Allred. Uh, uh, Kristen Wagoner, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And Professor Steve Vermeil from American University Law School, thank you all for being here. A fascinating uh, morning, an hour and 40 minutes of contentious debate back and forth. I'm Brian Ross. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.